this turns into another adventurous day. So now we are heading to Himeji Castle. We rented our kimonos. <laughs> and no, this is not a real samurai sword, it's an umbrella. <laughs> but I mean, even though I'm wearing it wrong, uh, it still still works because samurai didn't wear it on the back; they wore it on their on their side. But people keep looking, and I think they think it's real. <laughs> yeah. Even the person who at the rental who put on our kimonos, she really thought it was a sword. And then when we explained it was an umbrella, they were all like, <gasps> yeah. kind of a thing. If you're wondering where we rented our kimonos, we went to a store named Anakaren Kimono. Since it was a hot summer day, we wanted to avoid walking for a long time. So this store was a perfect choice. It's only 15 minutes away from the Meiji Castle. So the service in this store was exceptional. Staff members did everything to accommodate my needs. It was very difficult to find a suitable size for me since I am 6 foot 5, but in the end, he managed it and I was on my way. Stroll, and I have to double time scurry to keep up. Himeji Castle, also known as White Heron Castle, due to its elegant white appearance, is widely considered as Japan's most spectacular castle for its imposing size and beauty, and its well-preserved complex castle grounds. The castle is both a national treasure and a world heritage site. Unlike many other Japanese castles, it was never destroyed by war, earthquake, or fire and survives to this day as one of the country's 12 original castles. Himeji Castle lies at strategic points along the western approach to the former capital city Kyoto. This first fortification built on the sites were completed in the 1400s and were gradually enlarged over centuries by various clans who ruled over the region. The castle complex as it survives today is over 400 years old and was completed in 1609. It was made up of over 80 buildings spread across multiple valleys which are connected by series gates and winding paths. Himeji Castle is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. During April to August they will close at 6 p.m. Normally you would have to pay 1,000 yen to enter the castle only but if you want to see the Koko and Gardens you would pay 1,050 yen which is not so bad. After Himeji Castle we went to the Koko and Gardens which was opened in 1992 on the former site of the feudal lord's west residence, Nishi Oyashiki. It consists of nine separate wall gardens designed in various styles of the Edo period. Kokoen Garden features a pond with waterfall, a tea garden where visitors can enjoy green tea in the tea ceremony house, a pine tree garden, a bamboo garden, and a flower garden. The Kokoen Garden is next to Himeji Castle, so it's a short walk. Um, you can also walk from the station, it would take about 20 minutes. You just take uh, the Otemae Dori Street all the way till you reach uh, Himeji Castle and then it would be on your left. So right now we just got uh, back from Himeji Castle and we are trying Takoyaki which is um, octopus something, but there's octopus inside, and sweet sauce on top, and mayonnaise, and I think it's fish flakes. But um, this cause told us that takoyaki is um, known in Kyoto. Mm. So, but oh, we're, we're not in we're Kyoto. We're not in Kyoto. We're in Kyoto. <laughs> I got confused when I went. It's still relatively close, so maybe, you know, the secret's still there around the region. Yeah, it's good. It's really hot right now.
Good morning. Today we are in Hiroshima. We are going to see a couple of places and then an island that's close to Hiroshima. It might rain today. The weather is not so bad down here. In Kyoto, it was very humid and hopefully it doesn't rain that, that much. Shukeien Garden is located right in the middle of Hiroshima city and it makes pleasant escape from the city's atmosphere. The garden was commissioned right after the completion of Hiroshima Castle in 1620. Originally, the garden was not open to the public, but did open publicly in 1940. Five years later, the garden was destroyed in the atomic bombing of the city and has since been restored to its original splendor. Shukeien is a perfect example of traditional Japanese garden. The name literally means shrunken scenery garden, which encompasses the natural landscape of valleys, mountains, rivers, and lakes represented in the garden. The garden was designed by a warrior and tea master, which explains why there are multiple tea houses located around the garden, from which it can be observed at different angles. The garden also has a path that surrounds the circumference and is very pleasant to walk. Today, the garden has full schedule of tea ceremonies throughout the year and also has a tea shop where you can eat some amazing food. This one is the orange float. This one's the matcha with Japanese sweet. This one's the iced version. Okay, so orange float and the matcha. After the garden, we went to Hiroshima Castle. Hiroshima Castle is not as big as Himeji Castle, but it's still beautiful. You can walk around Hiroshima Castle and find a lot of vegetation. Some of them are trees that have survived the blast of 1945. After Hiroshima Castle, we walked to the main attraction. This is where you have uh, memorial sites for what happened back in World War II. It is one of the places I always wanted to visit growing up. And you know, it's a it's, it's beautiful place to, to visit. I highly recommend it. Just a brief history on uh, Hiroshima. This is the first city that the U.S. dropped its first atomic bomb. Uh, I'm actually standing close to the location where the bomb was set off. It was generally in that direction, uh, 300, 600 meters up in the sky, it exploded. And the atomic dome is one of the structures that was preserved to have people remember the the reason why we should not have nuclear weapons. Uh, one of the other things too is that the people who were in this general direction, they banished right away within a couple of seconds because of the energy of this bomb. Uh, we also learned that uh, there was an um, there's another monument uh, in memory of the students who who uh, were mobilized to help um, help during the war in different parts of Japan. 7,000 of them perished on that day. Uh, so, it, it, to me, coming to this place is, uh, it makes me more humble to know that, you know, the world has been at peace for, for a long time because of this war. Even though we've fought many wars, you know, that, that's a symbol of why we still, or we should, uh, keep the peace. You know, don't, don't let another world war occur or it will be much worse. That's one of the greatest fears that our leaders have at this time. And, you know, some politicians, they like to, uh, uh, how would you say, they like to pump their chest saying that we got nukes, we, we can destroy you anytime. And, you know, it's always on the media right now. You know, this country or that country, 
we can go at war at any time and cause uh, nuclear war, which is something we must avoid. Our final voyage took us to the island of Miyajima. It is known for its Itsukushima Shrine. The shrine and its Tori Gate are unique for being built over water, seemingly floating in the sea during high tide. The shrine complex consists of multiple buildings, including a prayer hall, main hall, and a North Theater stage, which are connected by boardwalks and supported by pillars above the sea. The sad thing about the Tori Gate was that when we arrived, it was under renovation. So we saw a lot of scaffolding surrounding it. It was disappointing because I was expecting the iconic gate as you see it on the pictures. Miyajima Island has a long history as a holy site of Shinto. The island's highest peak, Mount Milsen, was worshipped by local people as early as 6th century. In 1168, Tayara no Kiyomori, the most powerful man in Japan during the end of the Heian period, selected the island as the site of his clan's family shrine and built its Kushima shrine. Before going back to Kyoto, we decided to try one of Hiroshima style Okonomiyaki. The location of the restaurant is near Hiroshima Station. Once you enter the building, you have to take the elevator to the designated floor. When you reach the designated floor, you will see that there are numerous amounts of Okonomiyaki restaurants and you're just gonna have to make your best decision to see which one you want to try. Hiroshima's most famous food is its own style of okonomiyaki. The local version of the dish is characterized by only a thin layer of batter and a generous amount of cabbage on top of yakisoba noodles. Popular toppings include oyster, squid, and cheese. The dish is completed with bonito flakes, green labor, and okonomiyaki sauce. Overall, the food was great. I love the taste and you know it was a, a new experience for both of us. Never seen something quite like this before. Our last day in Japan took us back to Kyoto. We decided to go to Toji Temple which is a Buddhist temple near our Airbnb. After finishing our visit we hop on the train and headed back to Tokyo where we decided to visit Akihabara. For those who don't know, Akihabara is the anime center of the world. Here is where you will find anything related to anime. Once we were finished, we hopped back on the train and headed back to the airport. Ending our three week in Asia. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> They're making me so happy. So we just upgraded to business class. Uh, I believe everything is free, right? Yeah, it looks like it's all inclusive. Uh, we're gonna spend here eight hours before we fly back to Chicago. So we're gonna enjoy this place. We're filling up with draft beer right now into this cup. Reverse order. This is the first time I've seen this. Mm. This is like sci fi right here. That's fun. Overall, this trip in Japan was epic. We were able to traverse the country, visit different cities, and most of all, make wonderful memories with our friends Kaori and Kas. If you ever decide to go to Japan, make sure you invest money in your Japanese rail pass. It does take you places. Make sure that you try all the delicious food, visit all the places you can, 
and don't worry, I know at first the Japanese language might seem a little bit intimidating, but don't be scared, people are very helpful over there. So if you don't know the language, if you don't know how to read, not to worry, you'll find a way. He did. Enjoy the trip and I hope you enjoy the video. Subscribe and give us a like. Thanks for watching.